everyone, I'm Samantha Huffman, and I'm Heather Kinskowski. Uh, we did our experiment on do the same types of fungi grow on different types of bread, and our creative title is Another Loaf, Another Fungi. Okay, so I want to touch a little bit on the basics first. I want to define what um, a fungus is. The Oxford Dictionary defines a fungus as any group of multicellular, unicellular, or spore-producing organisms that feed on organic matter. Um, today in our society, fungi serve a diverse role. Um, they can break down organic material, they can be used as antibiotics to cure diseases, while some actually do cause diseases. Um, yeast, however, is the fungi that causes bread to rise, but there's other types of fungi that cause it to mold. Um, the most common type of bread mold is black bread mold, but when we look at a loaf of bread after it's molded, it's not always black. So, that's what our presentation's about. So our question and hypothesis. We want to know, do the same types of fungi grow on different types of bread? What we think is because of the different chemical makeups in the different types of bread, um, the growing fungi will not be the same. So our dependent variable is the different bread types and the, oh, yeah, the dependent variable. And then the dependent variable is the growing fungi. While finding experiments, we had a really hard time finding things that were related directly back to our topic. So we kind of found some that had to do with like the atmospheric changes influencing the types of fungi that grow and related that back to our topic. So our first experiment was titled Inhibition of Fungal Growth on Wheat and Rye Bread by Modified Atmosphere Packaging and Active Packaging Using Volatile Mustard Essential Oil. And it was performed by Karen Sugier and Pierre Nielsen. Um, what they did was they, their main goal was to study the effects of CO2 and oxygen contents in the packaging of wheat and rye bread, as well as how the atmosphere influenced the fungal growth on the bread. Uh, Suhir and Nielsen uh, varied the amounts of CO2 and oxygen found in the containers that had a single slice, slice of bread in them, and they were incubated over seven days um, at, a period, uh, sorry, at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And then it was found that after one day, early bread mold was already found on the bread. And then after seven days, penicillium commune was present on all of the wheat bread slices, while penicillium reguforte was present on all of the rye bread slices. Okay, so the second one that we found was the shelf life extension of Durham wheat bread performed by M.A. Del Noble and T. Mortoriello and et al. So basically what they did was, um, well, Durham bread is a bread that can only last three days while not refrigerated. So they wanted to know if they could um, prolong the shelf life without changing the chemical makeup of the actual bread, but the atmospheric um, makeup. So what they did was they took six loaves and six different bags, and they altered the um, carbon dioxide and nitrogen levels in each bag to see what what makeup would prolong the shelf life of the bread. And it was found that the higher carbon dioxide levels, the high, yeah, the higher the carbon dioxide levels, the longer the bread lasted. And um, some were lasted around like 38 days, so it had a significant increase of shelf life. So in relation, these experiments showed that the different chemical atmospheres influence how the how long the rye and wheat breads lasted without molding as well as the different types of mold on each bread slice after the allotted time. But our experiment tested the types of mold from on different types of bread while they were all in the same atmospheric environment. This experiment yeah, this experiment tests the mold growth based solely on the chemical compounds of the bread slices rather than the chemicals of the air. So this allowed us to see if at the atmosphere really influenced mold growth. Okay. So for our experiment, um, the materials that we're requiring are eight different Tupperware containers, um, eight different pipettes, masking tape marker, and then two pieces of four different types of bread. Um, the breads include millet bread, corn rice bread, wheat flour, which is white bread, and then whole wheat bread. Okay, so here are our breads, um, millet bread, is lower in protein than wheat, but more essential has more essential amino acids 
per kilogram of total nitrogen than wheat bread, according to Blue Silo, 2014. Um, corn, and, corn and rice bread is a gluten-free bread and it is rich in fats and starches. Wheat flour bread, which is probably the most common type, um, has little to no nutritional value when compared to other bread types. And then whole wheat bread, which contains the entire grain and is not stripped of any of its essential nutrients. Okay. So before beginning, um, my friend let a loaf of bread sit for three weeks and mold. So if anybody wants to look at it, there's some live mold for you to look at. Just thought I would bring it. And then for our procedure, we're going to take eight different Tupperware containers and place a slice of bread in each of them. Um, each bread will have two slices being tested. And then um, we'll use the pipettes to drop five drops of water on each slice of bread and then seal the containers to ensure that they're being um, exposed to the same atmosphere inside the container. Um, the containers will be labeled uh, with the type of bread as well as the slice number. And then they'll be placed into a dark drawer cabinet um, to help recreate the atmosphere where like a bread is usually found like in a bread drawer or one of the bread little things that's on the counter. Um, the temperature inside of that drawer will be cold, like cool and damp, but it won't be too cold or too hot to prohibit the fungal growth. And then they'll stay in the container um, inside of the cabinet for two weeks to ensure that some of the pieces will have fung uh, fungi present. And then here's an example of what it will look like. Okay. Alright, so after the two weeks is over, um, the bread slices will be taken out of their containers one at a time. Um, we will examine them thoroughly and each fungal type, if any, will be reported. They will then be put back into the cabinet for another week to ensure that um, growth is present. And this is just like a sample of our data sheet. So then after that next week, they'll be taken out and examined the same way as before. Um, and this is also used so that we can see if any different types of fungi grew in that third week of being in the drawer. And then um, after they're analyzed again, all of like, like slice one and two of the whole wheat bread will be placed on one sheet and they'll do the same for the other ones. And then all four of those pages will be cross analyzed to see if um, the same fungi did grow on the different bread or if it were, um, or different, or if different fungal species were found. And then here's an example of the sheet um, after they would be combined. And then um, if there's any questions, I'd like to answer them at this time. Anybody